So hello everyone. Um, my name is Gabriela and I am the senior member of our sales team. I will be conducting today's webinar on insights and insights in general are one of my favorite topics when it comes to productive. So I hope this uh, webinar is going to be insightful, educational, and as fun as it can be since we're talking about data and reports and all that serious stuff. Um, let's go through some ground rules today. Well, I will be the only person talking on this webinar for the first half an hour, let's say so. Uh, meanwhile, if you'll have any questions, please type them in a Q&A section, and I will definitely respond to your questions later. If there will be too many questions and we won't have time to cover them, and I hope that's going to be the scenario today, then we will follow up on the questions we couldn't answer via email. This webinar is also being recorded, so in case you need to drop off at any moment, uh, you'll definitely be able to watch the recording later and go through it again. Uh, so some of you might have already met me and I might have helped you already with your insights and you're coming here today to get a bit more from insights. Uh, if this is the first time you're seeing insights, well, um, I think it's going to be a very educational experience for you as well. So let me share a bit of a background on why Productive integrates insights in general. So any business in the world uses some key KPIs to monitor how they're doing in general. And the reality of any company and particular agencies is that the data about their business is spread everywhere. So at the end of the month, they're trying to gather these inputs and in manually in Excel or spreadsheet. And you know, it's a huge chaos. It's really hard to see what's happening with your business. And we were very aware of this issue, an issue that a lot of our customers were having throughout the years. So we kind of came and started thinking, how could we as Productive help and solve this problem? So we knew that we have most of the data about your business. So we had data on your timesheets, your costs, your project revenue, your invoicing, resourcing. How could we help you? We basically came to a solution. We realized that we can integrate all the data under a single roof and provide you with some customizable reporting. And that's how insights were born. So insights are a robust replacement for your spreadsheets, a place where you can automate your reporting, and we can spend minimal of time to set it up to get the maximum output and to get the data that you need to manage your business in a better way. So what I'm going to show you today is not just theory and all this, these buzzwords and, you know, fancy talk about data, I'm going to show you how exactly you can use insights to improve reporting in your own company. So in the first part, we're going to go through um, an example agency, like a demo organization, and I'm going to show you in live how you can actually set up your own insights. As I've said previously, if you'll have any questions, please type them in, in the Q&A section and I will cover them later. So let me move from this screen to another screen where we're gonna go into a live organization and see how insights can be used. So here we are, this is a known scenario for all of you. We are in productive, or right? the dashboard of productive. And all of you who have permission level in productive, so a role of a manager or an, or an admin have access to the insights in your main navigation and can find them on the left side, okay? Now, depending on your permission level, your access to insights will depend as well. So for example, if you are not a profitability manager or an admin, you will not have access to profitability insights, vice versa. If you're a profitability manager or an admin, you will have access to almost anything. So a place where I would suggest everyone to start when creating their own reports is actually the insights library. So from our agency experience, because as some of you might know, Productive actually comes from an agency background. We have carefully selected a fine selection of 50 templates that any agency can use to manage their own business. We have divided these template reports into different sections like financials, operations, forecasting, sales, or profitability. And basically you can use these templates as your starting point. You can use them to copy them for yourself or to customize them and you know, improve them a bit more for your own needs. So I'm gonna walk you through a couple of these so just so you can see what you can do with them. The first category that I would like to focus on, of course, speaking from productive perspective is profitability, because as you know, our whole claim is helping you become a more profitable agency. So this is something that I usually show to everyone. And in the profitability section, I think the key report is profitability by client, right? This report will show you 
which clients are bringing in most profit for an agency and where you need to improve your prices. So let's start with profitability by client. You might notice that we have two different insights, profitability by client and profitability by client invoice-based, right? The invoice-based recognizes revenue only once you invoice it. So as we know, you usually invoice later, so you might have actually done more revenue, but you haven't invoiced it yet. This is why I'm gonna use the recognized one because here in this report where we're selecting only the client projects, the revenue is based on hours you delivered and the revenue of those hours, okay? The revenue of those hours, of course, is dictated by the billable rate on those clients. We're filtering a time period of this year, but you can choose here any time period you want. You have a drop down here with a few options for different months, weeks, or quarters, or in the calendar, you can manually select any period you're interested in. We're looking at the past period. So in this report, if you're, for example, scheduling in advance, you can also look into the future projection, but I wanna see you know, this year and how, how we did this year. So here we have all of the clients. This is a list of the clients and the revenue and we're sorting it from the highest to the lowest revenue. We have also the cost. The cost is based on salary cost of people who worked on those projects, overhead cost that's added to that salary cost. And of course, any expenses that you, you are capturing as a cost on those projects. By expenses, I mean out of pocket expenses, of course. So when we deduct cost from revenue, we're getting recognized profit and you can easily see how much profit you're getting from those clients and what is the margin on each and every one of them. If you want to know where that profit is coming from, so this is an aggregation for the whole period for a client, you can add another group here. So I can add a group of projects, for example. So we can see how much we're getting from the projects. Okay, let me go again and show you how I got to this, okay? So to get to insights, you actually need to go into your main navigation, click on insights, and then click on this big plus, which leads you directly into the insights library. The category that I've selected was the profitability category, okay? And the insight that I was showing you previously was profitability by clients, okay? What I've added here was profitability by projects. So we could really understand where that profit is coming from. So here's an aggregation for the whole client and beneath you have different projects and the breakdown on that profit by project. Another category, which is key for any agency is definitely utilization, right? The more billable work your agency is doing, the more revenue you're gonna have. So ultimately you really need to steer that utilization to make sure everyone is bringing in enough revenue. So I'm going to look into the operations category. And I think one of the key KPIs any agency is tracking is billable utilization, right? So we're gonna click on billable utilization by person. And this is the key report I think any agency would track. And instead of last month, let's focus on this month's data. Okay, so I have changed the date here. And here we're also including some placeholders. So for those of you who do not use placeholders, which is by the way, a premium feature, placeholders, that's something that we would use to schedule work on people who haven't joined our company yet. So if you're planning to hire a designer later this month, but you don't know who it's gonna be yet, you're already scheduling work on that person. So when they come and join you, the work is already planned for them. So I will just exclude them, exclude placeholders by selecting the person type of a user. And let's look at this month and how billable our team was. So let me guide you through this specific, these specific fields. The first one is capacity. Let's take a look at Charles Blake here. Capacity is how many hours per month does a person typically work? So he works 160 hours per month. Um, available would be if the person took any time off, how many available hours did they actually have this month? So this person had 154 hours available because they took time off one day. Worked means how many hours the person has actually logged in productive. So this is driven directly from the timesheets of the person. So Charles had 150 hour, 54 hours available, but he actually worked 291. So he actually worked overtime. And if you want to see how many hours he did overtime, you can add an extra field here, which is called overtime. Okay. So he had 137 hours overtime. Out of the hours that he actually worked, 233 hours were billable. That means hours that were worked on a client project 
and the project manager has declared them as billable. Then to actually track utilization, most of, most of the companies compare. Out of the hours that Charles has worked, how many were billable? And they put those two in the ratio. So the ratio here, or the utilization itself, is 80%, okay? Charles was 80% utilized because he worked 933 billable hours from the sum of total hours that he did. Now, a lot of the companies have a target for utilization, and this is something that we can use in Insights as well. So I can actually put a target that I have a goal, everyone in my company should be 85% billable, okay? If they're billable below that number, I want that number to be five with the rest, right? So we have two people here which were not as billable as we wanted to. But have in mind that you are having differences here between the hours people actually worked and the hours they were available. So if your people have overtime, you'll have a discrepancy here. Or if your people do not track time, you'll have a huge difference between available hours and worked hours. So an alternative metric for utilization would be comparing the billable hours the person did with the total hours they had available. So let's look at Lucy here, okay? So if we compare billable hours with the worked hours, she was 75% billable or utilized. But I wanna compare the billable hours she did with the hours she actually had at her disposal this month. So I will add another metric here called billable versus available. And let's pull it here just next to the other utilization metrics. So you can see that now this number has dropped to 41% of the time. It's really important to look at this figure if, you're, if your employees are now really tracking all of their time, right? Because a lot of time people forget to track a day or they just miss some hours. So if that's your case, then look at that metric as well. In fact, there is a special insight we've created for you that will help you improve the time tracking, that will help you see if people are now really tracking all of their time. And that's something that you can, again, find in the insights library, but under the category of people, or you can just type in the name here. Basically, we have the search and an employee, and an employee insight that I'm looking for is people who are missing track time, right? So let's check out the data for last week. We have Lucy, Charles, and Luke. Okay, we have here available hours. So those were the hours they were supposed to track. And we're seeing how many hours they've actually tracked. So if they have a difference here, those are the hours that are missing from their timesheets. So what I'm gonna put here, I'm gonna put a um, limit. So I want people to have zero hours missing, okay? So people who are flagged with red are people who are missing time. And I want to be informed of this every Monday morning so I know whom to think that they're missing their time. And this is something that you can also filter by team. So if you're a team leader and you wanna make sure your team is tracking time, you can filter that specific department. For example, a department of design. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna save an insight for myself. So design team, missing hours in timesheets. I am saving this report now. So I I took a, an insight from the library, customized it for myself, and I am sharing with everyone. So everyone who's interested can see this or I'm sharing it just for myself, okay? Once I save it, and I can save it in any insight category I want, so you can create your custom insight, I can automate a command for productive to email this to me. So I can either download this whenever I want in any type of export, or I can ask Productive to email me the updated result for the previous week every Monday morning, okay? And not only to myself, I also want to share this with Luke, okay? Luke is my operations assistant, and I want him to be informed about this as well. Okay, great. So um, let's check out which other insights we can create from the library. The Pulse functionality is really great because you can create it for any report you want. So if there are like five or six key KPIs that you track in your agency and you want your managers to see that as well, and those managers don't really live in productive, but you want them to know that, you can inform them about the updated data every single month or every single week. So Pulse is a game-changing functionality when it comes to reporting. The next insight I want to show you from the library would be hmm, forecasting resource availability. So let's go back into the insights. 
And we're going to hit the operations category again. So step one is knowing how billable your people are in general. Step two would be predicting how billable they're going to be in the future. To get any type of inputs for that report, so to get the result that you need, you first need to schedule people in scheduling, right? So you need to first do your resourcing and scheduling, and then Productive will have an input to create a report on how available your team is going to be. You will find that report here under title Forecasted Billable Utilization by Person, and you can filter here whichever time period you want. Again, you could exclude the placeholders, but I'm not going to do that in this case. Why? Because placeholders are people that I plan to hire. So I want to see if we have enough, let's say enough work plan for those people or not. Let's see how busy those people are in the next 90 days. So we can see that in general for the next 90 days, our company as a whole is planned for 58% of the capacity. Um, that number comes from comparing the available time, which deducts the time off. And there's a huge benefit. I mean, this is a huge benefit of managing uh, time off and productive because it plays a huge part in your resource planning. We're comparing those hours with the hours we schedule for the clients. You can also include internal scheduled time here. So if you, for example, were to add scheduled time, that would include, you know, internal time of planned as well, if you're planning internal projects and scheduling as well. Basically, these two numbers together in a ratio give us a utilization. So we can see which people are more or less utilized in the next 90 days. But next 90 days is a huge period. And maybe you're not so, you know, good at planning for the next, uh, I don't know, three months. Maybe your resourcing is more accurate in January, but not really in March. So let's group this by month and see how we stand month by month. Okay. So we're seeing that in December, our team is 93% booked, which is great, but December is almost over. Let's focus on January. So in January, we are 77% booked. And then in February, we're down to 41% booked, which is normal, you know, because you're plan probably not planning that far ahead. And we can see people who are less planned and more planned, okay? Or people who are actually overbooked, Lucy's overbooked. So Lucy needs a replacement, or we can shift some work from Lucy to Bessie if they have the same skills. If you have a, you know, a lot of people on your team and you don't want to focus on the individuals, you can leverage on the custom fields. If you've uh, split people into different departments, teams, or skills using custom fields on people, then you can add that category as well and see how department by department your people are booked in the next time period. Okay. And you can actually click on totals just to focus on specific departments, not the individuals in those departments and see we have discrepancies, right? I'm gonna filter out the placeholders now because I'm just interested in people. So the person type that I'm looking at is just a user, so not a placeholder. And the coolest thing here is that I can turn this into a pivot. So the data geeks here and any financial people are gonna be impressed for sure. So let's see what the utilization broken down by departments in the next couple of months. So January, 93% in total. Um, design team is overbooked and development team is only 45% booked. And in February, we have 61% utilization. That's an average for the whole company, 79% for design and 8% for development. Again, this is a super powerful insight. And this should be a basis for both your hiring plans, uh, plans for you know, hiring contractors or full-time people. Um, you should align this together with your sales efforts. So you can tell your salespeople, hey, we need to find more work for developers in January and February. And our design team is overbooked. So if we can just, you know, uh, push some timelines later or start a collaboration with another design studio who can lend us some people in that time period. Uh, we will get to these questions later um, at the end of the webinar, but thanks for writing them down. Um, there's one more insight that I would like to show you from the insights library. And that will be something regarding the invoicing category. Okay, the invoicing category is also key because it basically tells us the cash coming in your agency. And it's also the most tangible uh, metric when it comes to revenue of your agency. So the report that I'm going to show you is invoiced revenue by clients. Okay, let's see which clients have brought in most revenue for a company lately. 
So we're seeing here date period of this year, and you can actually filter invoices with specific status. So for example, just show me things that have been paid, okay? But I will delete those status as I will look at all of the invoice revenue this year. So here's, uh, this report is sorted by revenue. So this is the company with the highest revenue. So this is our client, which is bringing most revenue, and this is the client bringing in least revenue, okay? We can actually visit, visualize this with a chart because there's a chart option as well in every insight. So if you grew by any criteria, you can pick up a chart and I'm gonna flip this into a donut chart. So we can actually visually see, let's visualize which client is the most, the biggest client basically, the one bringing the most revenue. So 54% of our revenue comes from ADB Bank and then 39% comes from Sweet Success. So these two clients together, to be honest, I'm not the best with math, but they bring in most like around 90% of our revenue. So they're for sure very risky clients to lose and you should be very good to them. In the same inside, if I go back into the table, I can flip the grouping. So instead of looking at things by a client, let's look at the, um, how did I invoicing go throughout the year, right? We're looking at this year by months, okay? Why? I want to use that input as a projection for the next year, right? So we're closing the year 2021. Let's use this as a projection for the next year. And I will visualize this again with a chart. A chart that I would need now is actually uh, a line chart, okay? So you can see that we did least invoicing in October, we invoiced only $3,000. And then we did most in December. So in December, we did 117K, which is huge which is most of the revenue. And we can definitely predict and in the next year, we're going to have a huge peak in invoicing in December. If I flip this back to the donut chart, you will actually see that 85% of the invoicing came in December, right? So this is the most, uh, the most um, beneficial month for us, let's call it that way. And you can expect that it's also the month when you'll deliver most work. Or perhaps clients are asking you to invoice in advance because they have some budgets left. Anyways, it's an important insight that you would definitely use for the next year. Okay, so uh, in the insights library, as I've mentioned, walking you through different categories, you can find zillions of reports that you can use and customize for yourself. And when you're creating your own insights, I would definitely suggest that you start from there. In 90% of the cases, the information that you're looking for, the data that you need will be found in, a, uh, in the insights library. However, in some specific cases, you can also create your custom insight, or if you want to play with insights in general and you're a big data geek like me, you can use the custom insights as well. Basically with custom insights, you're pulling out any data that you need from productive to create your own report. I'm going to take some water now because I've been talking for a while. And I'm going to show you around these custom insights right now. So let's imagine we have an imaginary agency and there are these questions that I want to answer and I need the data from the reports to answer those questions. So I'm going to go, we're going to go through each and every one of those questions and see how we can get the data in productive. So let's say the first question that I'm asking myself is a very basic one, a very essential one at the same time. It's who from my team is out of office next week? So if you're managing time off in productive, we can easily find that information out from scheduling. So to create an insight from scratch, you would just click here next to the insight library and create it from scratch. And the key information that you need to know is where am I getting that data from? So if the out of office information comes from scheduling, then you should probably select the bookings as your data source. Here you will filter any time period you're interested in. So I'm interested in next week's data. I want to see who from my team has any time of book next week. So the booking type that I'm filtering here is time off. I'm not interested in project bookings. I want to group this data by people to see who's off next week. Okay, so we're seeing exactly what type of category they have. Let's delete the project field here what type of category they have next week and when does it start and when does it end? So this is a great report, not only important to you as a manager and most of the insights are for managers, to be honest, this is a report that everyone at your team should see. So let's see, let's create one. 
which is custom, who's out of office next week. And I would add a description. So absences planned in our team next week. This is a report that I'll see for everyone and I will add it to the insights category. You can add a category yourself by typing its name and creating it or just adding it to one of these. I'll save this inside and I'm gonna tell you a little hack here with a pulse. You can email this, for example, for on the last day of the week. So weekly on Fridays for next week. And you can send this to your whole team, right? So even to people who don't have access to insights, potentially, but you want to share something with them, you can share it. So for example, I'm going to sell this to Maristela, Stan, Lucy, and Luke, because they are all members of my team. If there are no results, then don't send this pulse, okay? And you can format it in PDF, CSV or Excel, I'm going to send this as a PDF. If it were some financial data with a lot of, you know, numbers and stuff, I'll probably send it as Excel. Another people related insight that um, I would need is, for example, how many days of vacation do people have left? And this is a key question that a lot of HR people are asking themselves these days, because this year is about to end. And if you're using the time of approvals add-on in Productive, which is a premium add-on, you can definitely track this. So we have already your entitlements in Productive and we know already how many days of vacations you've used or any other type of time off, you can cre easily create that inside. What you need is a data source called entitlements and I can type the name to find it faster. So I'm taking a look at all of the entitlements for this year, and I will group them on a person level. So I want to see by my person, by every <laughs> by person in the team, and by time of category, what do they have? Okay. So we have people; they have different time of categories, and I want to see the totals. Okay. I want to see how many days we've allocated to them for that type of time off, how many days they've used already, and how many days they still have available. Again, this is something that you can turn into Pulse and email to yourself regularly. But to be honest, you'll be probably checking this a few times per year. The people themselves can check their entitlements when they're requesting time off, even though they don't have access to this inside. The next insight I would like to show you would be more of a financial insight. So in the agency, when you're managing a project, the key question you need to answer for yourself is, how much budget have I consumed? And this is probably something that you're talking about every single day. And in a lot of the reports, you can see ex exactly how much budget you've consumed, but you don't know where it's leaking, right? You don't know in a granular form of view how much of that budget you've consumed on which specific role, discipline, or service. So that's an information that you can find out from two data sources. Let me just explain you the difference. So to know how much budget you've consumed, you can find out from the budgets inside, but there you will see a total of budget consumed for that budget. I'm saying the word budget a lot in this sentence. In the services, however, you would see a total of budget consumed, but in a granular view with the breakdown for every single service. So that's the one that we're gonna use now. Okay, here we have the services inside, which I'm gonna go by budget. And I wanna see how much budget we've consumed. So I'm gonna you know, play with the fields here. Okay, and we're gonna add budget total, budget remaining, and a margin. Margin is something that you can always format into a number if you don't like the linear chart view which I don't like, for example. So here you will see an aggregation for the whole budget. For example, here we have 22K remaining and a 67% of a margin. And you can see it broken down by service. So we have 54% on content production, the profit margin, right? And here on project management, I've used 5K out of 7K. And you can see you know, where it's leaking basically. You can add time information here as well. So if you type in time, you'll have different types of time information. Or you can add money information, you know, budget remaining, budget used, etc. Now, 
A lot of you are already tracking how much you've consumed so far, how much you have remaining. This project looks fine. I have 22K remaining and uh, I have an overrun on just one service basically. And it's not a big of a deal. I'm not losing money anywhere except from SC. No, sorry, that's not negative. That's a positive. So this looks fine. But as you know, agency people, you need to be prepared for the future because things are very dynamic. So what I would suggest is to add a financial projection of the future to this report as well. So if you're using scheduling to plan work for the future, you can already project if you're gonna have a budget overrun or how much profit you're gonna make. So I will add two fields here. One of it is percentage of budget you're gonna use, okay? So I will turn this into a number or radial chart, right? So we can see here how much budget you're going to use. For example, here, you're going to have an overrun because you're going to spend 146% of the budget instead of you know maximum 100. And here on the development budget, you're going to use 196%. You can exactly see where it's going to leak, right? And to see it in an easier way, you can format this and you can say, I have a limit. We can use up to 100% of the budget. Colorize where we go over, right? So here, I can see that we'll go over the budget and it's gonna happen on content production and it's gonna happen on project management and it's gonna happen on SEO, okay? I can actually create a custom formula to see how much exactly I'm gonna go over, right? So budget over or overage would be total budget for that service or sorry, forecasted budget, how much I'm gonna use minus the budget total that was assigned for that service. Let's see if there's an overage. Okay, and we're seeing now exactly how much overage do we have. So this 500, 411%, how much over is that? It's 13K over, okay? This is 30K over, this is 1000 over, okay? So it's good to mix percentages with numbers um, in dollars to get a, a broader perspective, you know, 100% might mean a lot or a little, depending on how much money we're talking about. What you can also add here is forecasted margin. So you can see what would be the end profit on that service. So this is something that is now profitable, doesn't have an overrun, but what we've planned in the future is gonna be negative. So for sure, you would need to do something about this now. You can go in a granular view to see where exactly it's gonna leak. There are some services that seem profitable, like for example, website redesign so, or WordPress implementation. So you can play with the hours there and you know switch from one service to another to prevent that potential leaking. You have now information and time, you can definitely do something about it. If you don't wanna look at this in a very granular view, you can just click on totals and then see, on which budget you're gonna have or runs. And if you're interested in more, you would unclick the totals to see that in more details. So here I have an overrun, let's check why. Also, you have a lot of budgets here in this overview, you know, a huge list. If you want to just focus on those that have an overrun, there's a very cool trick in the insights and it's called conditional form, uh, filtering. So let's filter out all of the budgets that will have forecasted budget usage over 100%. That means they're going to have a projected overrun. So forecasted budget usage should be over 100%. And now we're just focusing on those budgets that are predicted to have an overrun. I will click the totals just to show you how accurate this is. Okay. This is a great trick for any report that has massive amount of data, right? If it's a huge report with tons of budgets and projects, you can use basically any of the fields here to filter on it. Like for example, let's check those who have forecasted budget uh, usage over 100% and a forecasted profit, which is less than $0, okay? Okay, so there's just three on which it's projected that we're gonna lose money and we have an overrun, right? So that's a very powerful tool at your disposal, let's say. So um, it's very good basically to find the key things that you're looking for when you have a large amount of data.
So these are the things that we need, need to solve first because they're both unprofitable and we'll go over the budget. And it's great how you can put different things here in fields and you know just compare stuff to get a broader picture because sometimes things are not as tragic when you compare two or three things together to get a full picture of what's happening. Okay, so this was a very intense insight. <laughs> Uh, let's go into one that's even more intense. And that's a question that a lot of the agency owners are asking me quite often. And it's a question on which teams or individuals in my company are more or less profitable. And I know it might sound so capitalist, <laughs> but uh, it's actually an important question that you need to ask yourself because first it means which team in which teams I should hire more people because obviously these teams are very profitable. Uh, so their services are well-priced or clients are willing to pay more for those services. Um, it's also a great start for, you know, paying bonuses. I know some companies that are actually awarding the teams or individuals that are more profitable. And uh, it's also good to see where you need to maybe change prices or maybe you are, you know, over-servicing clients uh, for those specific resources. Maybe you're just not resourcing people properly or putting the most expensive people to work on cheap services. Um, so that's an insight that I would actually build from time entries. Right? Why? Because with tracking time, we're capturing costs on projects. So I'm going to use time entries as my data source here. And let's look at this month's data and group this by um, different people. Okay. And those people belong to departments. So let's add the department information as well. We're going to flip it. So we're first seeing the department and then the people, and we're just focusing on the totals here. So it's important to compare both work time and billable time. Uh, if there's a difference, that means that you're over-servicing those people because you don't charge for their time potentially. Um, and what I would add here, or maybe they're working on a lot of non-billable stuff. And the information that I would add, add here is how much revenue they brought in for the company. So this revenue is uh, calculated by billable rates that you're charging for them on client projects with the billable hours they've, uh, they did, the cost, and the profit, of course. The cost is based on their salary cost plus the overhead, and profit is, of course, revenue minus cost, right? So we can see that some people brought very little revenue for the company, and some people did really good. Okay, so this, this is our most profitable person, and we can sort them. The most profitable person is Luke, actually, right? But have in mind that we're including overhead here, and um, regardless of your salary, productive is allocating to each person the same amount of overhead. So if you want to create an alternative formula that would exclude overhead, you can do that as well. Because in this insight, we have separated the overhead cost and the work cost, okay, into two different columns, right, or fields. We have excluded them. So you can create your alternative formula for profit. And that would be profit without overhead. So that would actually be a recognized revenue minus the pure work cost. Okay, good. So let's put this, let's pull this up and put it next to the recognized profit. And now you're seeing huge differences now, right? Let's delete these fields here. And you can see how this varies actually. Everyone's profitable is of course more profitable when we exclude overhead, but for some people it's huge dis difference. This is like six times the difference, okay? So if you want to have this alternative formula, you can use it as well. Don't use this as your um, you know, orientation when it comes to profitability, because of course people need to cover up for the agency expenses as well. I mean, that's the whole point of them being profitable. Okay, um, the time is flying literally. So there's just uh, one more insight that I wanna show you. And it's actually a whole other type of insight. So all of the insights that I've shown you so far are 360 insights that give you a full overview of your company. But if you're, for example, a project manager, of course, in any of the budgets or project insights, you can filter just your own projects or projects where you're the owner, but you also have insights category within your own project. So if you go here under the project section and you click on any of your projects, you will find the insights tab as well, right? So in the project itself, you'll find the insights. The difference is this insight 
is based on only the data of this project. These insights are completely customizable as well. So you can select any data sources that are connected to this project. The one that I would select, for example, is overview of all tasks on this project. So what I wanna know is how many tasks uh, we have assigned to every person on this project and how many they have actually finished. So let's actually group this by um, assignee. Okay, the person assigned to deliver the task. And let's see how many tasks we've added to them. Okay. So the field that I've added is actually the count. The count will basically count how many tasks I've assigned to them. So let's group this and we can see how many tasks we have assigned to them. And let's add another level, which would be status. Have they finished those tasks or not? Okay. So Lucy and Luke are the only ones that have actually some tasks which are closed. And let's put this into pivot because this is a huge table to see how many tasks were assigned to them. And from these tasks, have they closed any or they're all still open? Okay. Again, these insights as well are as customizable as the company-wide ones. Now the time really flew here uh, and we don't have a lot of time left. So I'm gonna get straight to your questions. Um, okay, um, Jason here asked, we book appointments in Google Diary for client meetings. How do I book these in productive so that they appear in scheduled work? So, so Jason, um, scheduling is now really uh, designed to plan your meetings. It's a long-term capacity planning where you're, for example, looking at next month and how booked your people are next month on client projects. Uh, so you were, wouldn't really use scheduling to schedule meetings. That's something that you'd still be doing in a Google Calendar. So Google Calendar is for organizing your work and scheduling is for planning capacity of your team. Uh, Deb had a great question. She asked, are these reports exportable and printing to share with your teams? Yes, so all of the reports here are exportable in PDF, CSV, and Excel. And of course, once you export them in PDF, you can print them. Um, or you can also share them with your team, either through a pulse or just sharing it in the common category or sending them the URL of the inside. Uh, Sandra asked, why are the zeros in the top row of the pivot table of utilization forecasting insight? Uh, I would need to go back to reproduce that insight, to be honest. Um, let me try and... See, that was the forecasted billable utilization. And we were grouping this by dates, months, and departments, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, um, okay. So the project manager management department obviously doesn't have any hours available, okay? Um, it only has Luke and Luke is not available at all in December, right? So he is probably scheduled on time off. Let's check this. Let's add capacity and time off. Okay, let's check out Luke. So another option is, and that's what it appears from here, Luke has zero hours of capacity. So Luke doesn't even have a cost rate defined or his cost rate is defined as zero hours in that period. Again, this is a fake organization. So the data might be off. Uh, this is probably not the case in most of the agencies. So the question, <laughs> and the answer to this question is he has his cost rate defined as zero hours in that period. That's why uh, the top row was zero hours. Um, okay, there was another question from Smith. Uh, what user permissions do you need in order to use insights? That's something we covered at the beginning, but let me emphasize again. So only the managers and the admins have access to the insights. Uh, others would not even see it in their main navigation, so they wouldn't have access to insights. Uh, also, the managers have access to insights depending on their permissions. So for example, if you're a manager, but not a profitability manager, you would not have access to profitability insights. Okay, uh, Deb had a question on invoicing. Is there an invoicing tool for companies within Productive? Um, so yes, um, if I understand your question correctly, you're basically asking me, can you invoice within Productive? And yes, so we have a whole invoicing module here where you would create your invoices. Uh, you can sync it with QuickBooks, Zero, or 
exact. And um, basically you would issue invoices here and then all of your invoicing data is used in the insights. Even if you're not really, you know, issuing invoices from Productive, you can still use this to create invoices so you can capture the data in your insights. Um, then Deb asked, I mean, to create and issue invoices to clients through Productive, I know we have entered our invoices into the system. Yes, yes, you can definitely create an, is an issue invoices to clients through Productive. And then if you issue those invoices, you can again use the data in your insights. Let's see if there are any other questions. Um, there's a new question from Sam. Thank you guys for your questions. This was amazing. Um, this is a slightly off topic, Sam says, but we have a lot of old data and productive. Do you have any tips on clearing this? Yeah, to be honest, that's a painful job. Uh, well, um, first of all, you need to start off by checking which data is off. And I would start with budgets and just seeing, you know, if something is off here. Um, there's no, you know, fast way to delete things, but you can use the multi select options and things to, you know, delete stuff. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of those things are going to be manual. Uh, what I would suggest, Sam, is that you reach out to our support team through the in-app chat here and reach out to them with that issue so we can see how we could help you. Okay, um, we are done with questions and we're within time. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your questions. Um, I'm really glad uh, a lot of you have made this webinar. I know um, this period is quite crazy for everyone. I hope this was insightful and educational. And if you'll have any other questions on Insight, and I'm sure you will, you can always reach out to us through the in-app chat and we would love to help you to create your own insights and use them to manage your agency. Thank you everyone for your time and attention.